What is up guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the Telltale Lights Kit. The TTL Light Kit is a series of lights and accessories that connect to a control module that gathers data from an IMU and from your VESC to make the lights interactive. There's also an Android app for manipulation and control of the lights. A huge thank you to Solid Circuits LLC for sending us this kit for free for review. We were in no way paid to make this video, but they did send us the lights for free, so a huge thank you to them. Solid Circuits sent us pretty much all of their products, so we're going to skip over an unboxing as there are simply too many individual items to go over, but we'll just discuss briefly each one of their accessories and then show you guys how we set up our board with the TTL modules. First up, we've got the headlights, and the headlights are 300 lumens, which is pretty bright for a set of electric skateboard lights. They are attached to a board via the 3D printed bracket, which has holes that line up with a truck bolt pattern, so they get bolted to your deck along with your trucks during the build process. This means that they are non-removable, and the only way to take them off is to completely remove your truck. Next, we've got the rear light or the brake light, and it's pretty much identical to the front headlight, except it features a red 3D printed cover so that the light appears red. It has the exact same 3D printed mounting bracket to be fixed to your board. Solid Circuits offers two different types of LED strips, analog and digital. These ones are the analog lights, and you can tell that they're the analog ones because they're slightly thinner than the digital ones. Analog basically just means that the lights can only be set to one solid color, so they're either going to be green or red, or basically any solid color of your choice. Analog are the cheaper of the two options, and they are a little less complex than the digitals. Here are the digital LED strips, and you can tell that they're the digitals from Solid Circuits because they're a little bit thicker than the analogs, and they also have a black background. With digital LED strips, each individual light can be set to its own color, meaning that you can make some really cool patterns and gradients. Of the two options, digital LEDs are slightly more expensive and a little more complex. Though the lights are definitely the focus of the TTL system, Solid Circuits also sells two different types of horns. This one right here is the loud horn and is a motorcycle horn and is extremely loud. The second option is the courtesy horn, which is much more mild. This right here is the control module and it is the brain of the TTL system. The control module controls all of the outputs, including your lights and the horn. It takes power from the battery pack and provides it to all of the components in the TTL system. Solid Circuits sells two different control modules, the SP version and the EP version. This right here is the SP or self-powered version and is the simpler of the two because it has an internal converter. The EP version requires use of an external buck converter that needs to be purchased from another source, but the advantage to it is that it can handle slightly more power than the SP version. This clever contraption is the universal power switch or the UPS. And what the UPS does is it enables you to power on your TTL module when you turn your board on, so long as you're using a VESC based ESC with an integrated power switch such as the Foxbox Unity, the Zenith, or the Flipsky 6.6. It basically just makes builds with the TTL module much more convenient. Another accessory that Solid Circuit sells is the RF remote. And what this remote does is it allows you to control the lights on the TTL kit with a simple remote controller other than the one that you use for your e-skate. The final accessory that we have is the U-Split, and the U-Split allows you to connect up to three UART devices to a single UART port on the VESC. Now that I've discussed all of the products that Solid Circuit sells and offers, I'm going to be discussing which of these products I used on my personal TTL kit setup. First up, I used both the headlight and the tail light from Solid Circuits. For the LED strips, I opted to use the digital ones as they have cooler patterns than the analog ones. In terms of the control module, I opted for the SP one as it doesn't require an external buck converter and will be sufficient for a more compact build like the one that I'm doing. I'm going to be implementing the universal power switch as the build that I'm putting the TTL system into is using a Unity and this way the TTL kit can be turned on when I turn my board on directly. I will also be using the RF remote to turn the lights manually on and off and the courtesy horn as my horn because I didn't have enough room in the enclosure for the loud horn. On top of that, there's also a bunch of other little connectors that you'll need to make this work that are also included with the TTL kit. So here's a quick shot of everything included with the TTL kit that I assembled.
the first step was to create a parallel connection between the battery and the TTL module. So to do this, I used an XT90 parallel connector and then an XT90 to XT30 adapter. This parallel connection will allow the Unity and the TTL system to both be powered off of the battery at the exact same time. We then installed the universal power switch by plugging it directly into the XT30 parallel adapter. The other end of the universal power switch then plugged into the SP module. The universal power switch must also be connected to the Foxbox Unity via the 2-pin JST connector, as shown right here. The universal power switch is now fully wired up and should be functional, so if you power on your board, the TTL module should also turn on. At this point, it's time to connect up all the accessories to the TTL module, so the first ones that we're going to do are the headlights and the taillights. And to do this, all you'll need are the actual headlight, the taillight, and the two extra long 2-pin JST cables with the intertwined wire. Basically, you just use the extra long cable to connect the headlight to the H port on the TTL module, and you use the other extra long wire to connect the taillight to the T port on the TTL module. To double check that everything's working properly, if you power your board on, both the headlight and taillight should turn on. The next thing that we did was to connect up our LED strips, and for some reason I have the analog ones shown here, but I ultimately did use the digital ones. So the first thing to do is to connect the 4-pin JST extender cable into the end of both sides of your LED strips. There should be two different extender cables. The opposite end of each 4-pin JST extender cable will then plug into the R port and the L port on the TTL module, one for the right side underglow and one for the left side underglow. You can then power on your power switch of the board to make sure that the LED strips are properly functioning. The next set of wires to plug in are those that connect your TTL module to the UART port on your VESC based ESC to allow for communication and data transfer between the two. So you plug in the 3 pin to the ESC port on your TTL module and then you plug in the opposing end to the UART port on your VESC based ESC. Because this plugs into the UART port, it means you can only realistically do this if you're using a PPM based remote. The courtesy horn was the next thing that I added to my TTL module, and it simply plugs into the little 2 pin port that has a little horn logo on it. With the module almost up and ready to go, with the exception of the button port, I secured it to my enclosure using some velcro. Now, the button port is the last input required for the module to be fully up and functioning, and there are two options for this. The first is to use a PPM remote controller with momentary or toggle switches, and the second is to use the RF remote controller. We opted to use the RF remote controller and the receiver for it, as we are going to be using a remote without a momentary push button switch. So the receiver for the RF remote controller has a 3-pin JST which plugs into the BTN or button port on the TTL module, and then it also has a 2-pin for power that plugs into the 12-volt port on the TTL module. At this point, all of the hardware is wired up, and this is what the inside of our enclosure looked like when everything was plugged up together. And as you can see, it's a jumble of wires and a huge mess in there, so it's just important to keep track of what everything is. So jumping straight into the installation of the lights, it's pretty simple. Like I said earlier in the video, the headlights just go straight under the base plate of your truck. The rear lights were a little bit more of an issue for us, as we are going to be having motors mounted off the rear of the board, so we actually had to mount our lights on top of the board. If your motor mounts are inward facing, you won't have to worry about this and the rear light gets mounted the same way as the headlight. Jumping into the LED strips, they have a nice adhesive on the back that just peels back and allows lights to stick on. I did find the adhesive to be a little bit weak, but that could just be because my enclosure isn't very smooth. So I ended up using a little bit of glue on the LED strips after they fell off for the first time. So just make sure they're stuck on very well. Routing all of the various connectors from the TTL module to the accessories outside of the enclosure can be a little bit untidy, so it's important to have good cable management throughout the TTL module installation process. Just like that, all that's left is a little bit of programming, and then the lights were up and running, and this is what the finished product looked like.
as you guys can see from this footage, the TTL kit looks absolutely phenomenal. It is so cool looking and completely changes the riding experience at night. So I'm going to be shifting this video away from the more technical aspects of the light and into a demo and review of whether these lights are worth it or not. So starting out with the app, the app is super cool and you can control all of the lights features from the app. It's actually crucial that you do have the app to actually get these things set up, but once they are set up, you can use it to control your board, turn the lights on and off, and change the parameters. Here is the RF remote that we chose to set up to control our lights outside of the app. So basically, you just click the button. We have it set up so that one tap will turn our headlights and taillights on. One tap again will turn them off. Double clicking will turn on our LEDs on the bottom, and double clicking them again will turn them off. Triple clicking will change the LEDs mode, so there's various different patterns that it will cycle through each time we triple click. There are nine different cycle patterns, so you can really match the LEDs to your personal style. To sound the courtesy horn, all we have to do is hold down on the clicker and the horn will sound as long as it's being held. I personally really like the RF remote controller because it's very simple, and I also really like it because it allows me to use remotes other than a standard PPM remote. The best option for this light kit is to use a standard PPM remote with a momentary button because you can perform all of these features that the RF remote controller does from that momentary button on your remote controller directly. One feature that I think is super cool in respect to the taillight is the fact that it lights up and gets brighter when you actually break on the remote controller and that's because the TTL module receives data from your VESC. So basically, if you brake, the light gets brighter just as it would on car taillights, which is super cool and alerts riders at night that you're stopping. Now, one of the really nice things about the TTL system is that it incorporates various types of lights into your electric skateboard build. So obviously, headlights and taillights are really important to be seen at night, but LEDs also add a certain level of expression to your board while riding, and the TTL module is able to combine those both effectively. But I'm sure one of the big questions that all of you guys have is how these stack up against the shred lights, more specifically their SL300s. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison shot of the headlights and taillights in comparison to the SL300s and the SLR1s. Immediately, it's pretty clear that the SL300s have a definite leg up over the solid circuits headlights, and that's because the shred lights are 300 lumens apiece, whereas the solid circuits headlights are only 300 lumens combined total. They also give off this yellowish tint compared to the more white light on the SL300s. Here you can see that the visibility range on the SL300 is also quite a bit farther than that on the solid circuits headlight. As for the taillights, the SLR1s are both brighter from farther away and project light farther than the solid circuits taillights. In a side-by-side -side comparison between shred lights and the TTL kit, there's definite pros and cons to each one. Shred lights are absolutely the way to go if you're looking for the best possible performance out of lights, but the TTL kit is so much more customizable and allows you to turn your lights on and off from a remote controller, which is something that no other e-skate light can do. The performance on the TTL lights also isn't bad by any means and is still extremely bright and the fact that you don't have to charge them and that they're powered directly off of your board's battery is another huge advantage. Moving away from a comparison between these and the shred lights and focusing just on these lights, I absolutely love the TTL kit. In terms of the quality of the solid circuits products and the performance of them, I think that this footage speaks for itself. They just look so good on a board at night. The customizability of the headlight, the taillight, the LED strips, and the various horns that you can choose from is the highlight of this kit, and the fact that it's so modular is what makes it so cool. The app is also a huge added benefit, and it's really well designed and pretty intuitive to understand and customize your light system. Solid Circuits also has a ton of very detailed documentation on their website, so it's relatively easy to get this kit up and running as long as you're willing to put in the time. I love the LED strips that they included with the TTL kit and the fact that they're cut to the proper length for an electric skateboard. A lot of the times you'll see LED strips that are way too long and have to be cut down, but these ones already come pre-cut to the perfect size for your board. One of the things that I don't appreciate that much about the TTL kit is the fact that you have to have so many loose, small, dangling wires on the outside of your enclosure in order to power all of the external accessories. That's just the nature of this product, and as long as you have good cable management, it isn't too much of an issue. I just have to be a little more careful when I pop up in the enclosure for routine maintenance, and make sure that I don't snag any of the wires along the way. I think that it's important to note that this is definitely a very DIY product, and what I mean by that is it's definitely going to take some time to troubleshoot and work things out before you finally get this kit up and running for the first time. 
I would highly recommend this product to any avid DIYers out there that are looking for some LED strips, headlights, and taillights for their board, as well as a horn. I really don't think that there's a more complete solution out there that integrates so easily into a DIY build with a VESC, and I'm really excited to see where the future of this project leads. If you're looking for the most practical, easy to use, easy to set up, and solvable lights out there, I probably wouldn't recommend this kit as it's going to take quite a bit of DIY experience, knowledge, and time to set these up. If you're looking for a budget option for lights for your electric skateboard, these also aren't going to be the best option as the setup that we have on this board runs for $210. To conclude this video, I absolutely love all of these products from Solid Circuits. They're so high quality and they provide such a cool riding experience at night. If you guys are looking for the most high powered electric skateboard lights, I'd recommend the shred lights. But if you guys are looking for an interactive set of LED lights, headlights, and a horn that can be powered and controlled off of your battery and your remote controller, then I would recommend checking out Solid Circuits. These are super cool and I'm really excited to see what they build next. That's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, let us know in the comment section below. And if you're interested in learning more about the TTL system, we will leave a link in the description to Solid Circuits website. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for lots of other DIY electric skateboard content. We have tons of really cool videos coming in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you guys in the next one.